In this video, I'll give you a quick straight to the point tutorial on how to record guitar in FL Studio. To record guitar in FL Studio, you need to have the producer version. The cheaper Fruity Edition doesn't allow audio recordings, so make sure you have the producer version to follow this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm using FL Studio 20, but the steps should be essentially the same for future versions. The first step is to connect your guitar to your computer. There are a couple of ways you can do this. You can use an audio interface, which is suitable for electric or acoustic guitars, or a USB microphone, which is suitable for acoustic guitars. Check out the link in the description to learn about different audio interfaces and how to choose the right one for you. In this tutorial, I'm using an iRig HD2 and will use it to connect an electric guitar to my PC. You can follow the same steps whether you're recording an acoustic or electric guitar or any other instrument. Once you plug your audio interface or microphone into your computer, open FL Studio. The first thing to do when you open FL Studio is to set up your audio device so FL Studio knows what inputs you want to record from. Go to the Options and Audio Settings menu. This is where you set up FL Studio to use your audio interface. Select the Device drop-down menu to see the different options you have. Look for an option that matches your audio interface. For example, if you have a Focusrite audio interface plugged in, you should see Focusrite USB ASIO as one of the options. That option should give you the best results. If you don't see your audio interface on the list of audio devices, it doesn't mean your interface doesn't work with FL Studio. All it means is there isn't a dedicated driver for it. You can see that I don't have an option for my iRig, but there are still a few options you can use. FL Studio comes with its own ASIO driver, so if you don't have a dedicated option for your audio interface, try that first. If you're on a Mac, use the built-in output driver or any core audio driver that matches your audio interface. Once you have selected your driver, click the Show ASIO Panel button. You will use this to tell FL Studio what inputs and outputs you will use from your interface. If you have a driver that matches your audio interface, it will look different to what you see here but you can still follow the same basic steps. First, you need to select the correct input from your audio interface or microphone. If you select the drop-down menu, you'll see the different inputs available. As I'm using FL Studio's ASIO driver, you can see that it shows my iRig input as well as input from my computer. In this example, I'm going to enable my input from my iRig, but use my computer speakers as the output. That way I can hear my guitar through my normal speakers instead of having to connect speakers to the iRig. So I select my iRig on the input drop-down and my computer's speakers from the output drop-down. You can choose whatever combination of inputs and outputs you want to use. The sample rate you choose here needs to be compatible with your audio interface. 44.1 or 48 kilohertz should work with pretty much any device. Some devices support higher sample rates, so check your interface before you select a higher rate. When recording guitar in FL Studio, the buffer length is important to understand. The length or size of the buffer will impact the latency you hear. Latency is the delay between when you play a note on your guitar and when you hear that note on your speakers. The lower the latency, the better. To lower latency, you need to lower the buffer length. At the moment, you can see that I have the buffer set to 512 samples, which gives me an overall latency of 65 milliseconds. If you lower the buffer size too much, you'll start hearing glitches and issues. So try to get the lowest latency possible that your computer can still comfortably handle. The sample rate will also impact latency. So if you're having latency issues, try increasing the sample rate. A higher sample rate will reduce latency, but will also cause your CPU to work harder. As you can see, there is a lot of latency here. So if you have issues with FL Studio's ASIO driver, I recommend installing ASIO for all, which I've found gives better performance most of the time. The guide on my website for this tutorial explains ASIO for All in detail. Once I select ASIO for All and choose my inputs and outputs, you can see that the latency drops right down to a comfortable level. Once you have your audio device set up, you can close the audio settings window and start setting up a track for recording. When you open FL Studio, it starts with a blank project. Open the playlist window by pressing F5 or pressing this button. This is the view that shows our recordings. Open the mixer view by pressing F9 or this button. The mixer is where we will arm tracks for recording and select the input devices. You can select any of these insert channels for recording. Let's use insert channel 1. Click this dot icon on the track to arm it for recording. 
At any time you can see what a button or icon does by looking at this area of the screen. It will tell you what the button does as well as any key shortcuts. When you arm a track for recording, it turns red in the mixer so you know which tracks are armed. Before you start recording, you need to tell FL Studio what input devices to use for this track. Depending on your layout, you'll see an input drop down menu on the far left or the far right of the mixer. You'll see options for stereo or mono inputs. As I'm recording an electric guitar in this example, I only need a mono recording, so I'll select my iRig's first input. Now that the track is set up with the correct inputs, click the master channel. You'll see an output drop down menu at the bottom corner of the mixer. Make sure the correct output device is selected here so you can hear audio when you record. Before you hit record, you need to make sure the audio levels are set properly. If the level is too low or too high, you'll end up with a poor quality recording that can't be fixed. You may have already noticed that as soon as you select the input channel for the track, that the audio meters on the track light up and you should start hearing your guitar. Make sure the meter never maxes out or you'll end up with clipping on your recordings. Adjust the controls on your audio interface so that you get a loud but not clipping signal. Don't use the slider on the screen to adjust your audio level. That's for later after you record your tracks. Use your audio interface's level controls to properly set your level. Once you're happy with your audio levels, you can start recording. Click the record button on the top of the screen. You'll see a window pop up asking what you'd like to record. Some of these options are useful later on, but for now, click the audio in the playlist as an audio clip option. This option will record audio clips just like any other audio recording program. Once you choose this option, you'll hear FL Studio give you a four count before it starts recording. Then you'll start seeing the recording appear in the track. When you've finished recording, hit the spacebar or stop button to stop. If you don't like the countdown before FL Studio starts recording, you can turn it off by clicking this button, or you can change it to count one or two bars by right clicking. After you have recorded something, you'll see your recording in two places. You'll see the clip in the timeline as well as on the left of the arrangement view under a list of audio clips. I recommend right clicking the clip in this list and rename it to something more useful for later on. If you plan to record a full song in FL Studio, it can quickly become confusing unless you name or color code your clips. If you want to delete a recorded clip, delete it from this list. Deleting it from the arrangement view doesn't delete the actual clip. On the timeline, you can drag the recording around in time or to other tracks. You can drag the ends to trim the clip or you can remove it by right clicking it. You can also paste copies of the clip anywhere in the arrangement. You can also bring up the options for the clip by clicking this top left icon. To hear the clip, turn off recording by clicking the record icon, then hit play or your spacebar to listen to the playback. Okay, now that you know the basics on how to record guitar in FL Studio, let's have a quick look at using effects and plugins. FL Studio comes with a nice range of effects and you can add third party plugins such as Amplitube, Bias Effects or Line 6 Helix Native to model guitar amps and effects. To add any plugin effect to a track, select the track in the mixer and look to the right to find the effects slots. Click a slot to bring up a list of effects you can add to the track. Click the More Effects option to see a full list. If you don't see any of your third party plugins on this list, click the Manage Plugins button. Here you can add any directories where you have installed your plugins. Once you select the right folders, click the Start Scan button and you'll see the plugins appear on the list. FL Studio comes with a lot of effects, so it's handy to create an easy shortcut for any plugins that you'll commonly use. Let's create a shortcut where you can access all your favorite guitar plugins. In the Plugin Manager, click a plugin you'll regularly use. I've selected Amplitude 4 from the list. Now click the Plugin option here on the left and bring up the settings for that plugin. Click the favorite text and enter a category. In this example, I've put in guitar plugins to make it easier for me to find Amplitude and other guitar plugins later on. I'll do the same with bias effects too. After you have added one or more guitar plugins to a custom category, you can close the plugin manager. Now when you click one of those FX slots in the mixer, you'll see your custom category show up with the plugins you added. This makes it nice and easy to quickly find your most used plugins from the list. If I click Amplitude, FL Studio loads it and then applies it to the track. If you close the plugin window, just click the plugin on the FX slot list to bring it back up. 
you can toggle effects on or off by clicking the little button to the right of the FX slot. I hope you found this quick tutorial helpful in getting you started with recording guitar in FL Studio. You now know how to set up your audio device, record your guitar and add plugins. Check out my full guide in the description for more details and for solutions of common issues people have when trying to record guitar in FL Studio. Let me know in the comments if you found this tutorial useful so I know if I should make more of them or if you would like to see a tutorial on a specific topic.